Hello, yes. Hey teacher, good evening. Hey guys. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you, teacher. Okay, we're gonna wait just a few minutes for the rest of the people to join. Okay, perfect. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, of course, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Good.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. Today is Friday, so which is very, very good. And then we're gonna start the class, the last one from this week. This is the class of today. So we're going to speak a little bit more about millennials. Actually, we're gonna check about all the generations. And there are two questions for this one. So you can participate into those. And also let me then just check some things. Um, I was checking my friends, hold on a second, about the platform. Let me check. Okay, it's supposed that we have to be finishing the week one and week two, and also the midterm test. So let's see, Francisco Eduardo, is it here? Yes, Francisco, I don't have anything from the platform. Uh, do you have any problem with the access to the platform? Anything is going on? Hello, Francisco Eduardo, can you hear me? Well, not here. Anyways, I'm going to send on the chat that kind of information. Um, but Irene is not coming anymore. Jose Osming also is missing the week two and the midterm test. It's very important for you to finish that one. I sent already the grades and you have zero this week. So please try to finish this week, okay? And also, by next Wednesday, we have to finish the week number three. So we need to be careful on that one. Let's see what else. Uh, Maria Alejandra is not here. Okay, going to chat with her. Uh, Ramon is not here, right? Okay, let me check who else is, might be missing something. See, Steven is not coming anymore. Okay, that is it. The rest of you, uh, you have done the exercises. Just remember that it's very important for you to finish the platform, right? To be uh, week by week. So by this Wednesday, we have to be uh, finishing the week number three. Okay, and then just one more week and we'll finish all the platform. Okay. So we're going to check the attendance as usual. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Okay, good, got it. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good, Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Ok. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. No problem, Sara. No problem with the microphone. Eh, Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villa Corta Rivera. Zuleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, just a few today, yeah? Maybe they are at the disco dancing. <laughs> It is yeah. Friday and the body knows. Yeah. Well, you can connect from the disco, you know, dancing and speaking in English. So <laughs> the important part is to, to be with us here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue with the class. And uh, 
Let me just check. Uh, this is the one. Okay. Let me then just close this and here we go. We're going to start with a little video. So as usual, we're going to check about the video and then you're going to provide some feedback, some opinion, uh, comments, whatever you want to say, okay? So, and this is not the video, it's this one. Okay. Here we go. Someone asked me recently, hey, what can I do to become a better trainer? Now, I love this question because I find that most of the time when a trainer has mastered their content, they stop developing their competency as a trainer. We mistakenly define the quality of our training by the familiarity with the content. But familiarity with the content doesn't necessarily mean you're a great trainer. The past eight years, I've spent the majority of my time training trainers. And one of the principles I share with them on a consistent basis is this. If you wanna be a great trainer, you have to be a great student of training. In fact, if you wanna be great at anything, you need to be a great student of that thing. So today, I wanna to share with you three disciplines that you can practice that will help you continually get better and grow into a great trainer. Discipline number one is learn something new about the topic before you teach it. I never want to go into a training session stale. Several years ago, I was, I was doing a, a full day, eight hour session on leadership development. This is the topic I've taught hundreds of times and, and you know, feel like I'm very, very proficient in it. And so I taught all day long. At the end of the training, I went, I got my car and I was driving home and it hit me. Mac, you didn't say one thing today that you had never said before. And that bothered me because it was an indicator that I was no longer growing in my knowledge and awareness of this topic of leadership development. So here's what I did. I said, okay, I'm gonna reset myself. I, right now I'm at this level of knowledge, a 401 level of knowledge. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna begin to redefine 401 level as 101 level. I'm no longer at a 401 level, I'm at a 101 level. And that reset in my mind challenged me. And all of a sudden, I began to study and study harder around the topic of leadership development. I began to read books outside the normal books that I would read. I began to talk to people that I normally hadn't talked to. And I began to learn leadership development at a whole new level. And here's the thing, guys, whatever your topic is you're teaching, Learn something new and fresh about that topic before you go into the session and teach it, regardless of your level of expertise. Here's what I've discovered. It's often the freshest thing that I'm learning that has the deepest impact on those that I'm training. Discipline number two is always teach from a place of curiosity. When you do that, you're constantly asking questions that are drawing out of the students what they already know. Here's what I've discovered. Every student in that room knows something that I don't know, and I wanna learn from them. I'm not just asking questions that are in my training script just to ask questions. I wanna ask questions because I'm curious. I'm curious about what they know, what they've experienced, where they've had success, where they've had failure. And so I wanna, I wanna lean into the session with curiosity and ask the students questions that, that will draw out of them what they're learning. So a lot of times, if you're in one of my training sessions, you're gonna hear me asking questions like, hey, who do you know that does that well? What did you learn from them when they did that? And a lot of times when they answer, I'll go, oh my gosh, I, I've never thought about that. Or you gotta be kidding me, that's fascinating. And I'll find myself writing down because I'm learning something in the session. Now, when your students see you doing that, it causes them to learn at a whole different level. You see, you got to engage yourself, not just as a trainer, but as a learner. And when you lead from a place of curiosity, you're the questions you're going to ask are going to be at a deep level because they're questions that are challenging your thinking, not just their thinking. So that by doing this, by leading with curiosity helps me grow in my knowledge and helps me grow as a trainer. Discipline number three is process through each exercise and each question in advance so you can be focused and flexible during the session. There's an old military quote that says, no battle plan survives the first contact with the enemy. 
Well, this very same thing is true of a training plan. No training plan ever survives first contact with the students. So what I wanna do is I wanna think through each session, process it through before I teach it, each exercise, each question that I'm gonna be asking. I wanna think through, what are their responses? What are they gonna be thinking? What questions are they gonna come up with? I'm gonna think through my follow-up questions and so that I can be fully prepared for whatever scenario comes my, my way. And so by processing this ahead of time, I can be familiar with where this might be going and I can be prepared for anything, almost anything they throw my way or anything I'm gonna face during that training session. So always think through and process through your session before you teach it, all right? So hey, these are three disciplines that I think have, have helped me become a better trainer and uh, I would love to hear from you. What are some of the disciplines you practice as a trainer that help you uh, get better in your training efforts. Hey, thanks again for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you click the like button, share it with your team, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, what did you get from this one, my friends? Well, very important that he, um, it, the first I, I took notes for the first step she mentioned the first thing uh, is uh, to really find what are you, what you are doing uh, because she, he mentioned something very important even though the, it doesn't matter your level of expertise in the topic you are teaching always need to learn something new and don't uh, you just don't be like uh, under a script or the same way of how we provide a training or a session or a knowledge to, to someone. And that is what I took note that it doesn't matter the level of expertise the person has, always it's important to study and learn something new to remaster, I guess he said, redefine what uh, the knowledge or what is the topic uh, we are uh, talking about. Very good, perfect. So that was very interesting, right? Sometimes, sometimes that happens when you're doing this for a long, long time. Well, you forget and you are like doing mechanical things, right? But uh, whenever you are in front of people, you need to, to try to find a way to impact people, right? Mm -hmm. Good, any other comments, opinion? Mm. I don't know if, if the second thing that, that uh, the man was talking about, uh, they mentioned something that uh, try to, try to uh, teach from a different, uh, not, not from the same place. I don't know if it's right. Yeah, yeah, it, that was the main idea. Yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, I think he's, uh, because of the way that, that he was dressed, uh, maybe he's a trainer, a boy trainer or, some, or something like that. Maybe for, uh, for his case or, or for his, uh, um, type of training, uh, the, the situation applies, but uh, in other cases, for example, uh, uh, I, 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 I will talk about myself, okay? Of course. In my case, uh, I have, I have my, my, my office at home, so I have my desk, my PC, my, my, my PC, and mm -hmm. an extra monitor. So I I cannot take this thing to the, to other place in order to to try to do something different. Okay. Okay. Not not like he said, but <clears throat> but uh, we try to read re, um I don't know how to say in English, reencausar. 
like right direct something like that right direct uh, the training or the or the things that you are trying to teach to other people so uh, <clears throat> uh, i think uh, in my case is like this uh, i have a script okay so because i i I work with Insafor too. So uh, the, the center uh, told me, so you have this script, okay? Uh, at least you have to complete this, okay? But if you want to add something new or something that uh, innovate the class, you can do it. So I try to, to do the, the, the basic things uh, quickly in order to uh, give the extra mile or give another uh, kind of exercise, which more uh, applied to the, mm. to the reality, okay? Because uh, in Excel, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, you can uh, treat a lot of data, okay? But, uh, the the examples or the exercise in order to 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 do most uh, more more um, comprehensive they are about for example uh, 16 rows okay but in re, in in the reality the, that's not like this uh, we're talking about miles of rows of data or miles of data rows. So I have to, to um, sometimes I have to take <laughs> my inventions uh, and not, not in, in, in other uh, cases, I have to, uh, to take some examples for, from other uh, teachers or colleagues that are in a, with, uh, in another level, okay? In order to uh, take the practice, the most um, parecido a la realidad. Like, very like hood. Uh-huh. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, that, that is the way that we can, uh, in this kind of, of trainings or, or in this kind of, of teaching, uh, I think we have to 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 do this this thing in order to 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 get out of of the script and be more uh, how to say more uh, no sé charismático o o, o que no sea no, not support the class okay yeah yeah. Yeah, actually, that is very important. Sometimes, depending on the topic, it's kind of difficult. I've been teaching uh, different subjects. For example, I teach at, at the university sometimes, but statistics or math or sometimes uh, there is a there is a there is a subject that is about law. I mean, commercial law. That kind of topics are kind of difficult because it's just article, articles, the law. Yes sometimes it's hard to to be creative right to to find a way so people get involved but that is just reading and interpretation so it's kind of difficult so there are uh, some challenges whenever you are training or when you are in front of people sometimes maybe you are not teaching just a subject but maybe you are going to provide a little training about about anything so uh, it's very challenging right yes 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 Good. Any other comments or opinion about the video? Yeah, I have uh, a comment. Go ahead. Uh, in the third step, mm -hmm. I guess uh, he said that uh, you can learn and ask about your learning. Am I right? Yep. Okay. And for me, it personally, is is the best way to learn. And from the point of view of the trainer, the best way to 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 teach. 
because uh, with the practice um, you you can get better better knowledge about the topic or you can improve your your skills and I think that uh, I've, personally it is is the best way for me and and it's, it's important because you you can try to keep the focus on in a little parts and it's better because if you make a test at at the end of the of the complete topic maybe you can lose something uh, something details and if you if you evaluate and you know, if you make a test uh, from no from your parts i don't know how to say okay for partes yeah separated you can say separate oh, yeah. separated is is more was more possible that you can you can keep the knowledge for more for more time or or you can remember it in the future because uh you get the focus and i don't know it's it's a uh, it's a good way for me very good perfect thank you so yeah to be uh i mean to to train people is sometimes uh, difficult and challenging so let me ask you something who do you remember was the best teacher that you have ever had in general what was the best teacher that you had who was i remember mm -hmm. i remember my my math teachers in college and or no high school bachillerato high school yeah yeah in high school because the, he had he has a good way to explain it and with joke and it was a a menos no sé cómo decir a menos it was entertaining ah, entertainment class and very very interesting uh, apart for apart oh no besides of the class uh, he, he he told us about his life <laughs> his experience life and when you are teenager uh, or uh, at least at least me when I was teenager, I enjoy it. Uh, heard the, the 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 teacher or the adult uh, told me about their their experience because uh, I don't know it was in, in, interesting. Maybe because uh, it was an experience that I don't have in this moment. And. Uh, but not only the, the, the experience personal that he told uh, also the, the, the class it was many enter, very very entertaining thing I remember <laughs> very good <laughs> it sounds like a good experience the one that you had so nice that's good yeah <laughs> okay any other uh, person that wants to share who was the best teacher professor that you had You didn't have any good teacher, a good professor? Well, I remember that when I was in, I don't know what grade, but we was studying the algebra, algebra? Algebra, huh? Algebra, yeah. And that teacher, I don't remember her name, but she explained very well all the cases and i remember that we have um miscellaneous i i don't remember but i i uh, did and that time around 100 exercise and um, and i remember that she uh, gave me a another grade, I, I don't know, maybe como que me duplicó la nota. 
I duplicated the I dupli last Yeah, one. she duplicated my note because uh, I did the best note in that exercise. And I guess that is not just for, for my effort. I think that uh, she contributed a, a lot with uh, that topic because it's, it's hard, you know, when we was in childhood, we hated the mathematics. But uh, I, I have a good um, memories about uh, that uh, gray because she was a, a perfect teacher for me. Very good, thank you. That was a nice experience, very nice. Any other person wants to share about a good teacher that you had in the past? Our professor, you know, professor is at the university, teacher is at school. In my case, it was a professor because it was in the U, in the university. <clears throat> um, it was a low professor, but a, um, in my case, my, my career is a engineer in uh, IT or in, or in, in tech, okay? So uh, for, for the major of the course, uh, this topic or this signature, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, this signature, it was like, uh, ah, this signature is for nothing, okay? <clears throat> but in my case, I, I enjoyed the, the, this course or this class because uh, the examples, or the or the cases, the study cases, were more uh, accurate to the reality. So, uh, yeah, we had to read, we had to uh, to interpret or something like that. But in uh, in most of the cases, it was like, uh, okay, this is this is the situation, uh, and not not about you know no no not about you read it's all about you know general your general uh, uh, knowledge okay how can we solve this situation so uh, uh, for the things that we know uh, we find we, we found a solution but after this solution and after explaining all the points of view uh, so uh, the professor was like like this. Okay, that was that simple logic uh, means. Okay, but um, under the law, you have to uh, <clears throat> sorry, you have to consider these uh, articles for this code or this law uh, and. Uh, you have to go to, to, you have to, you have to have, I think, the general view of, of the situation. So uh, first we explain as we understand, but after this, he explained us uh, with, with the consequences of knowing the law, okay? So we can, we could contrast uh, the two points of view and some, sometimes the logical is logic, but, but in other situations, the logic is not legal, okay? So you have to uh, understand the law in order to try to solve in, uh, in a better uh, way the situation. So I, I remember that class because uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, not always the logic is logical, okay? <laughs> I, I don't know. 
because but, but that's that class and, and that professor was for me a, an excellent uh, trainer or, a, or an excellent uh, teacher okay okay yeah it sounds interesting uh, as i was telling you i mean that kind of topic is is difficult when you want to teach like articles law procedures and uh well you need to find a way so it becomes interesting so good any other person wants to share okay so uh well i i think here in el salvador we have a big problem about about teachers in general because i believe that maybe the most of them, they don't have the vocation, right? They go to university as usual. Sometimes we we don't know what we're gonna study, what is this about? But I mean, we want to be professional. So some people, they decide to become teacher because of many reasons, but not because they really want to help other people to train, uh, to, to learn, to be different, to change their lives. So that is kind of difficult that, um, many people they are teaching there in the classrooms they go and do things in automatic and at the end of course you uh, maybe the objective the students have is to to pass right but not to learn which is yeah it's good but it's not the main purpose of, of being there okay so we are going to start with the topic of today which is going to be this one about some characteristics about uh, well, all the generations. Uh, so we're going to analyze about boomers to the zoomers, says, and there are characteristics of different generations at work. So, what motivates each of the generations at work? How do they approach topics like work life balance or career development? We'll answer these questions and provide ideas for how you can best support each of the generations at your organizations. Okay, the first two paragraphs are going to be for Fernando. Could you please help me with that? Yes, sure. Okay. So, Mars is people who use Zoom. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, unless your business is a solo operation, you're probably working with a multi generational team. Lucky for you. There are major benefits to an edge diverse workforce. You can use the unique perspective of your employees to appeal to different edge demographics, mentor each other, and solve problems with a combination of experience and fresh perspectives. 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 Ah, perspectives. Okay. Part of harnessing the potential of your multi-generational team is understanding the characteristics of each of the generation. When you are un unaware. Unaware. When you are unaware of the different generational perspectives interacted in your workforce, you risk to over due to issues like aims or unmet needs. Okay, what do you get from this? Uh, I understand that is is a it's a good thing that your thing is formed by different um, different generation, different age age demographic, because uh, the older people can teach to the youngest people, and it's interesting. Personally, I I have the the uh, the lucky to to form to participate in in, in team uh, of this characteristic and it's very interesting because uh, i i have learned a lot of people older than me and in the second paragraph a uh, point that you can if you have a thing of which this characteristic you can you you can learn to manage because uh, if present if there is a problem or an issue and maybe you you cannot you can have that 
So you don't have the, the expertise to manage, and maybe this issue can be can be a bit problem and the team maybe broke, maybe will broke. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I Go don't ahead. understand AAs. Okay, we're going to check. Yeah, so there are some words always in this kind of articles that I like to check. Sometimes yes. there are not many, but sometimes there are a lot of very good words so we can learn. Very nice. Okay, so yes, actually, yeah, what it says is true. If you are working with other people, you're probably working with a multi-generational team. So yes, I mean, you work with people that are 40 years uh, and 20 years old. So they are in different mindsets right so they have different ways of thinking and uh, well you can learn from different people but also you need to understand how they want to do things how how do they need to be treated things like that so that is very important right let's check some words uh, what is unless Anybody? It's a uh, otherwise? Otherwise, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's a word that expresses that only if this is happening, then this is going to happen. Something like that, one, right? Let's see. What is an age diverse workforce? I think formal for person with person belong to different generation. Very good. That is it. Multi generational, right? So that is it. Related to work, of course. It says perspective of your place to appeal. What is to appeal? In this case, teacher to appeal is like to attract. To attract, yeah, yeah, to to approach, to be closer to, right? Okay, and let's see. Part of harnessing. What is harnessing? Okay, harnessing might be something around or, or like um, leveraging, so pushing, to link and push something or somebody. Characteristics, let's see. What is to be unaware? Don't be afraid, maybe. Don't be afraid, you say? Uh-huh. Mm, it's not no. being, uh-huh. You are not aware that something is happening. Aware, yeah, not aware. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you don't know, right? So you yeah. are not conscious about something. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, ageism. According to translate, because I don't know what it is, it's like discrimination for your age. It's not discrimination, but it's the fact that people are getting older, right? So as we were discussing one day of this, I don't remember, you are not going to analyze things the same way. You are not going to move your body the same way, even when you want to, even when you're in your mind, sometimes it's there. I mean, it's going to be 
different right so it's not possible good let's move on the next two are going to be for juan miguel could you please help me with the next two paragraphs okay fortunately yeah fortunately yeah fortunately fortunately we put together this article to help you we'll take a look at the characteristics of different generations in the workplace workplace and touch on considerations on you as an HR professional should keep in mind when making decisions about how to best support your workforce and explain your employee value proposition EVP um, will make recommendations for benefits programs for benefit programs and best practices you should consider implementing in order to tailor your EVP to the needs of your unique workforce. A worldwide endeavor that can improve your employees' job satisfaction and in turn your recruiting and rotation efforts. Good, what do you get from this? Um, Maybe in the first paragraph, if we are talking about tech decisions, uh, but these decisions should be in order to um, uh -huh, the, those decisions uh, has ha, have to be uh, in order to uh, obviously improve the workforce and uh, all the not the weaknesses the opposite of weaknesses strengthens the strengthening oh, okay the strengthening uh, um and Uh, no, I don't know. I think only. Okay. Yeah, it's like you need to take in consideration that if you are speaking with different people from different generations, of course, you are going to treat them in a different way. And they are going to be, uh, I mean, everything might be different. The way that you talk with them, uh, the way that you manage some situations, some crisis, the way that you are going to motivate them as well. So. Let's check some words. Uh, let's see. Well, strengthen or strengths, right? Um, let's see. Worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So what is worthwhile? Something no, that has value and I don't know, like a competition or something. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Uh, okay. Actually, you are right. So it's going to be something like the something that is valuable, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Okay. The other one was. Okay. Devor or Endeavor. Endeavor, huh? Oh, discover. It's like, it's like discover. Very good to discover, to try to achieve something, things like that. And there are no other. So let's start with the baby boomers that they were born. Well, it says baby boomers were born between 1946 and 1964, the end of World War II and the economic prosperity that followed led to a boom of births, hence the name baby boomers so now you know why they call them baby boomers because after the war mostly the american people and people in europe they had a prosperity economic were very good because they were building many things 
many good things were happening. So people say, let's have five children. Let's have six children. That was not TV, you know. So that's why they call it baby boomers. So there are a few characteristics of baby boomers. The first one is going to be for Ana Claudia. Okay. Uh, the first paragraph and the first characteristic? Yeah, they are, yeah. Okay. Baby boomers were born between 1946 and 1964. The end of World War II and the economic prosperity that followed it led to a born of birth, hence the name baby boomers. Here are a few characteristics of baby boomers. They are competitive and I always have issues with the word. Is driven or driving? Driven. Driven, okay. They are competitive and driven. When boomers reach working age, they face higher competition for jobs because of the rise in population. This led to a generation of determined workers who take pride in their careers. Okay, what did you get from that? Like the man we saw at the very beginning. <laughs> I guess he's from this generation because <laughs> is, uh, his speech was around, you have to succeed, you have to show, out, show up being different, something like that. And, and it's true. People uh, born in these uh, baby boomers, can we say season? Or yeah, we can say period or period. span. Do you remember span? Uh, what? What is the other one? What? Span. Ah, okay. Span. Oh, yes. S-P-A-N, right? Yeah, yeah. My God. <laughs> okay, <laughs> span. Uh, yes. For example, I think... I don't know if I'm correct, I'm mistaken. I don't know if people like, I don't know if people like like Trump or Elon Musk were born in this span. I don't know, I'm not sure, but I, I would think so because they are uh, workers. And I think this span is uh, known as the workaholic, workaholic, because they want to accomplish their personal goal, but they set higher expectation for them, and they must achieve them, and it doesn't matter, and sometimes their uh, health also suffer the consequences for the hard work they do. I don't know if that is the concept that, that, that I I have for this span and also uh, I agree that they are so competitive. Okay, very good. So that is interesting, right? Imagine that uh, people like, like this in this age, uh, they are very competitive. They are focused. They say, I want to achieve that one and I'm going to work for that one. So I'm going to do my best. Interesting. So, mm -hmm. and then you know how to motivate them, right? So if you are working with the people like that is like you I, you can do it i mean i'm going to help you and you can achieve this goal and you are the best and that's it they're happy right <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. when it says that they are driven is because they are they have the willingness to learn and they have the willingness to to be like yes uh, um, I, how can i say this they these are people that you can um, guide to a purpose. Is that the meaning of driven? Yeah, driven is that they are uh, by themselves. They are looking for something uh, to to help in their job. So they are researching. They are ah, reading. Okay, it's not that they are persons that easily you can guide. Let's say it in that way. Uh, no, in that case, it's like more like self-driven. So it's like, I, I can do this, I can research, uh -huh. I will do my best. My so in this case, it's like proactive people? Yeah, something like that. And maybe it's a little bit more in the part of research and be better by themselves, but proactive is to do something, right? Mm, okay. Good, perfect. The next one is going to be uh, for, let's see, who's missing? Uh, Raymond, is it possible for you? Uh, 
Not possible. Giselle. Is it possible for you, Giselle? Not possible. Okay. Um, Ada Cáceres. Yes, teacher. Okay, so it's going to be the next paragraph, they value. They value visibility into the their work. This can make a remote work um, environment challenging for them. It's a recent get up survey uh, 48 of the small business employees over the age of the five. 56. 50, 50, 50, 56 say that their job satisfaction was higher when they were working in the office or work kids. Continue? Work site. No, that is it. So, work site. Uh, what do you get from this? Is the, is the visibility uh, their work is, uh, is very important and the no teacher. I know, understand. <laughs> okay, no worry. So the idea of this one is that they want to show their job. I mean, the, the okay. work they're doing. So they like, they enjoy that everybody's looking at them when they are doing their job, and when they okay. achieve things. When they so for them, it's better to go to the office than to stay uh, in at home and work from home. So that is better for them. So that is the main idea for this. Okay. Good. Let me see if there are some words. I prefer home office. Oh, I prefer home office, definitely. That is amazing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's the best that has happened to me. I know that pandemic was very bad and many people died, but I was very happy. It has the, been the best thing too. that <laughs> the best yeah. thing that pandemic has. Yeah, I mean sometimes you know I'm very tired and I I, I start my work at Google at eight and sometimes I, I wake up at seven forty. So it's like oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh my goodness, it's almost time. I take a shower and get some coffee and I start working and but I'm there, I'm on time. <laughs> so it's like time. me, I, I started at seven and a half and I woke up at seven. Yeah, I mean, if you are organized and you have everything in the place that you need, it's easier, right? But I mean, to go to, I mean, I live in Santa Ana, I mean, to go to San Salvador and oh, I, I used to wake up at four in the morning. So. Oh, I used to wake, I used to wake up at 3.30 and at 4.20, I was in my way. Oh. It was so oh, oh, frustrating. You mind when when it's raining and mm -hmm. you are oh, no, 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 I don't want it. <laughs> a few, few weeks I don't ago. Want to remember those days. <laughs> Either <laughs> rainy days or sunny days. It doesn't matter. I love to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you were saying something. Uh, hmm? I guess Danny was saying something. I don't know. But anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, they prefer to go to the office because they enjoy to be there and to show how they are doing things. So interesting, right? I mean, it's not that if you were born in that time, definitely you are not going to stay at home. I mean, maybe there are some people that they prefer to be at home, but if they have to choose sometimes, maybe the most of them is going to be like that. Okay, the next one is going to be for, let's see. Jose Osmin, is possible for you? Yes, teacher, which one? Uh, they are retiring. Okay, they are retiring later than previous generation, improve life expectancy, combined with baby boom, boomers, a strong work ethic has led to the majority of their retiring later than previous generations. According to Gather, Gardner, 36% of the current workforce in the United States is made up of employees about 65 years, 
64 years of age, and this percentage is expected to increase to 45 by 2028. Japan, Germany, and Italy are also facing a silver tsunami, tsunami right? Yeah. Uh, which more than 20% of their population about the age of 65 uh, full content available to climb. Okay, what did you get from this? Okay, let's see. You are describing my neighbor. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, I mean, um, I believe that whenever I have the age to retire, maybe I'm not going to retire, I mean, uh, what I'm going to do at home. Maybe I'm going to look for a job that is less stressful. But you are not a baby boomer. Right? I'm not a baby boomer, no. <laughs> but you think like a baby boomer. <laughs> I think that that is a good thing. I mean, uh, yes, I could stay at home, but I mean, I, I need to do something. Uh, maybe not that much because right now, I mean, I have two jobs, right? So that is, that is demanding okay. and that is stressful. But then maybe my I can I can continue teaching only so that would be very good, right? But that is my point of view. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm not going to get to the age. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, this is about that one. I mean, they are retiring later. They they want to continue work. So yeah, that happens. <laughs> Thanks, Anna Claudia. No, yeah, this woman, my, my neighbor, my God, she is still communing to San Salvador. And I say, hey, I don't even remember her name. But no, they just rest. Now, you know, she's, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, she's around 66 or 68. And she's oh still communing. She, uh, used to travel in the same uh, private transportation. We were like a, a, a group of people from different jobs where we had that private transportation. I'm, I'm my God, uh, I can just not imagine, but she is still communing from Monday to Saturday, not only from to Saturday. <laughs> my God. Uh, and she, she is working, uh, it's a, uh, it's very important that silver, silver what is that? Silver? A tsunami. Uh -huh, silver tsunami. Because I guess that is what is happening also here in our country with a lot of teachers. They don't want to retire. They, uh, they uh, don't accept the technology in their life. And they are like stalking people to learn because they don't move. So the younger, the, the younger teachers or youngest, yes, young, younger, youngest teacher, uh -huh. they don't have like a job. They cannot apply because a lot of people is still working, but they don't like technology. And now they must move with technology. Yeah, yeah I believe that that is true. I mean, uh, if you are going to continue working, of course, you need to adapt yourself, right? So. Mm -hmm. It's not possible for you to say I'm going to continue, but I'm going to continue in my own way. So that is not possible. Mm -hmm. But yes, I believe that is maybe not the, the part of the money, but it's maybe, I mean, what am I going to do? Um, exactly. Bro, mm -hmm. I guess that there are people there, they are afraid that they are going to maybe die younger or sooner. They, they, they don't want to, there was a bear, aging, aging? Aging. Aging, uh -huh. the aging they don't accept the, age, the, the aging uh, stage. I don't know if it's correct. <laughs> yeah, aging. yeah, actually that is fine. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that, that is maybe the main, the main thing is that, I mean, maybe mm -hmm. yes, the money is good, but uh, they, don't, they don't want to feel useless or mm -hmm. having nothing to do. I mean, when you are like 75, of course, right? There is a time when, if you are still alive, of course, you need to rest, right? You don't, you cannot continue working. But anyways, that happens, right? Okay, so we're going to stop a little bit and then we're going to check 
about their attendance. Uh, he said, okay, and uh, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Present teacher. Good. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleyma Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, so we are going to continue with this. That's kind of interesting, right? <laughs> Let's see. Okay, got you, Giselle. Okay. Okay, so what should what you should do for baby boomers at your workplace? The first uh, one is going to be for uh, Francisco Eduardo. It is true. Yeah. And the first paragraph. Yeah, recognize. Recognize then for their accomplishment. Baby boomers place value of the organization they work for, the position they hold, and the duration with which they stay with a company acknowledging their accomplishment will improve your chance of retaining them. Good. What do you get from that? Mm. Teacher, with me, uh, accomplishment. Accomplishment is when you have a goal and you reach that goal. So you accomplish something. Okay, teacher. Um, Okay. Sure. Uh, uh -huh. I understand. Uh, it's uh, about for uh, the baby boomers uh, feel value in the organization. Uh, uh, because for the, uh, the accomplishment. Uh, is a, a, I understand that uh, it's a characteristic for these people, for this, uh, this generation, this people generation. Okay. Yeah, actually that's it. I mean, uh, if you, uh, they really like that you go and say, good job, you made it. You are the one. So only uh, about doing that one, they are going to be happy. They will feel valuable for the, for the companies. Uh, right, I, I, the, the people uh, feel well uh, when the, uh, your uh, boss uh, say uh, uh, this uh, more motivation, uh, right teacher? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess everybody is, is like that one, but they are, for them, it's very important. 
very important. If they accomplish something and nobody says anything, they feel they feel sad. They don't feel very good, and they start thinking, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go from this company. They don't care about me." So, yeah. So it, it really touched them. Good. It's like a sensible person. Well, it's a sensible person about these kind of situations, right? It's like, remember that they are very hardworking. They don't like to retire. They, they research and they study by themselves. But if they do not get recognition, they don't feel very well. So impressive. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, as I was telling you, for everybody is important, but you might say, okay, I made my job and whatever, right? But for them, it's very important that somebody comes and say, hey, you did a very good job. But sometimes it's, well, I think when you receive some accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was telling you that, I mean, everybody will really like that that you go and uh, that somebody goes and says, hey, you did a very good job. But sometimes, for example, with the teams that we have here in Google, we ask questions, uh, what, what do you want? What motivates you? And the most of them, they say money. Right? Money. Yeah, <laughs> okay. they want money. I don't care if I, I, I am very good and I'm I, money. If you give me money, if you give me coupons for the supermarket, for gas, or if you give me I don't know, a gift or food or oh, okay. that that's that's what what they really want. So of course they are not baby boomers, right? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, the next one is going to be for uh, Roxana. Could you please help me with this? Yes. Make time for face-to-face -face interactions. Growing up without digital Communications means that boomers are more inanable, amenable, amenable, amenable to interactions in group meetings. If you organize, if your organization is fully remote, video conference a few times a week is a great way to imi imitate in-person inter interaction. Okay, so what did you get from this? Well, I imagine that the baby boomers need to uh, feel the rest of the employees or colleagues near to them. Maybe they need uh, attention and contact, physical contact, I imagine, share with uh, the rest of the coworkers or just stay there. Okay. Yeah, actually, it, that is very important for them to have a relation with other people, to say hello, how are you, you know what happened to me in the weekend. Maybe you didn't ask, but they are I, I telling you anyway. <laughs> that, yes, uh, yeah. If you see, if you see these people is right now like 50, 60 years old, and that is exactly the kind of people that you find in the, on the street that they say, everything is very expensive, right? You know, I, I bought some tomatoes <laughs> yeah. on the court. And you say, ah, okay. <laughs> you are talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean. I'm like that, but it's not my age. Okay. I am 32. But okay. I think that maybe for our parents, we adapt that that type or, or of, um, I don't know, uh, communication or uh, it's weird yeah actually that is true i mean whenever you have an environment that teaches something something mm -hmm. maybe it's not your age but you are going to learn that one and you are going to feel comfortable speaking with other people there are people that are not like that there are people that you speak with them and they are uh, mm -hmm. yeah goodbye so but I there can are... be both <laughs> okay Maybe depending on the situation, right? Because it means that if you feel that person that is kind of suspicious, you might say, mm. yeah. So that depends on the situation, definitely. So yeah. I am a, a, a leader, baby boomer, maybe? <laughs> no, you say the truth. I mean, when you have an environment, when you are with the, the people around you, they are like that, 
or I mean, also remember that there are some things that are um, hereditary. I mean, things that they you have it because of your personality, because they are your mom and your dad, and they are like that. So definitely they are adapting. Exactly, mm -hmm. everything is important. Everything. Mm, okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Okay, grown up, let me see. There are no words. Amenable. That is like exactly the same of Spanish word, amenable. So they I enjoy and they tell jokes. They they speak a lot. That's it. So they really enjoy interaction with people, right? Good. The next one is going to be for, let's see. Maria Alejandra. Okay. Mm, create a culture, no. Yep, that's it. Ah, okay. Create a culture will come in of a gene workforce. Yep. A gene, a gene. Agents. can be so, so, so. So, okay, several, so, uh -huh. uh, several of over, but either way is violence, the age violence. Mm -hmm. violence, the age discrimination in employment act, which protect individual age, 40s or above, regardless, regardless of their age. Your employee should be offered development opportunities as access to training, acknowledgement of their performance and regular feedback and coaching. What did you get from this? Mm. So ageism is uh, what somebody said before, right? You remember that we were checking about the board and somebody says that whenever a person is getting older. Some people might think that they are not good for the job and they push uh, them backwards and things like that one. Okay. Mm. I think that, that the problem in this case is the age for a person to older compare that others. Uh, for example, that people or that adults to have more than 40s or that other employees to discriminate for that don't have the same abilities or to learn quick and in try to protect for that this person um take a um secure sec, no a safety uh, for that no have discrimination and that the all the persons uh, give the same opportunities to try to have more knowledge more feedback how do how to improve or to have the same uh, the same level for that the others come the uh, employees okay yeah that is it so uh, that's why it says create a culture welcoming of an asian workforce i mean they need to be included there they need to be part of i mean they need yeah. to have like an opportunity, right? Exactly. I guess we live, we are uh, get used to see this in our jobs, like the ones we were in a call center, because as far as I remember, uh, people can apply even though I don't remember if they are 60 or 65. And some years ago, I, well, I've been in this environment in like around 15 years. I've seen many, 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 uh, I've been working with uh, a lot of people and I remember there was one year when the banks, they were like um, grabbed with another, with international institutions, stuff like that. We had a lot of uh, 
police team members, they were above uh, 58 or 60 years. But due, uh, thanks God, they uh, were English speakers, they had a new opportunity. And, it, and it's true, the technology for them, they, the pace, uh, how they learn, it was different. But it, they had um, good people skill, uh, they were patient, they had knowledge in other areas. Most of them, they, they been working at the bank institutions. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I guess the ones we were in a call center, we are get used to have co colleagues, co-workers above 50, 60 years. And for us, it's like normal. But if you look at uh, Salvadorian business or Salvadorian company, mm -mm. you are 35 and you are old. My God, it's so <laughs> frustrating. That is true. I mean, there are just a few industries that allow that one. Um, yeah, if you go to any company, I mean, if you go to Claro, if you go to Tigo, if you go to uh, many, uh, the most of the companies, you are not going to find people that are kind of elderly. So, and yes, for example, in the teaching institution, I believe that there are people that they can be 60, 70 years old, that is no problem. Or yeah, in the call center industry, there are some industries that are that are good into that aspect, but there are other that I mean because they may a may of the company because of the technology that they manage, because mm -hmm. of the stress that they manage as well. So, but it should be included. There should be an option at least for a few. I mean, maybe not everybody, but of course, at least for a few. Good, perfect. Uh, okay, let me just check about the other one. This is the Generation X, uh, independent and well-educated individuals. It says Generation X includes individuals from the 1965 to 1980. Though there are theories about the origins of the moniker X, many believe that the X refers to an unknown variable or to a desire not to be defined. So, yeah, the moniker is like uh, this little letter that is like a label, right? So that is it. And uh, yes, I believe that that I, I have read that the X is because of that. We don't want to be part of a label. Anyways, the X is the label, right? So it says here a few characteristics oops, of Gen Xers. So the first one is going to be for, let's see. Uh, Marcus. Uh, the first one, the, uh, the characteristics, okay, they value autonomy. Mm -hmm. Often the children of two working parents and years became, 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 became uh -huh. independent and learn to solve problems on their own early on in life. What did you get from that? I understand that one characteristic of this generation is learn how to solve problems in the early years of their life. They can be just a, no, 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 not that totally, but some way independent. So from, from the parents, so they can move in the early years and solve their problem and face it. The, uh, the, um, the new phase of their, of their life, the adulthood. Okay, so that is it. I mean, these kind of people, because their parents, they are working, the two parents were working. Sometimes they had to learn to cook, to iron, to do things that maybe uh, other people, the parents, they will do for them. So that's why they learned how to be autonomous. They can be independent. So that was good. Okay, the next one is for Jose Wilfredo. Uh, is it possible for you, Jose Wilfredo?
Okay, not possible. Let's move on. Um, Ana Claudia, could you please help us with that? With the with the second one? Yeah, please. They are well educated. Yeah. Okay. They are well educated. They decline of manufacturing jobs at the time Gen Xers were leaving for were leaving for college led to a generation that used education as a means for professional advancement. In a Garner survey, 43% of Gen X respondents stated that they had graduated college, full content available to clients. Okay, so what do you get from that one? I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> totally agree. So uh, it's like, uh, I mean, because I'm from this generation, all of my my the my friends, my the people I interact, yes, the most they study. In fact, my best friend, she's now studying a PhD, I guess is the name in English. Yeah. So she continues studying. Well, in my case, I I, I this getting this type of courses for me is like getting more and more and and it's like you always looking to study and to like uh, I don't know how to say I don't know if I'm using this word in the correct way to perfect a little bit more what you already know what to do I don't know if I'm using well this but yes the most you study is like in your mind you are completing like a wall and the tails, always there will be tails to add, tiles, I'm sorry, tiles to add, tails, not tiles, <laughs> I'm sorry, tiles to add. And it's like, like a competition in the environment you are moving on. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, actually, that is so true. I am part of this generation as well. And definitely, I mean, the first and the second one is exactly, I mean, I, I just, I remember that when I was 10 years old, I used to cook beans, rice, I made the coffee. When my mom and my dad, they came to the house, I, I had everything done. I cleaned the house. Mm -hmm. I did many things. Yes, and we have, we have working parents because they been working all day long. Mm -hmm. That is true. And yes, I mean, to go to the university was something very important mm -hmm. to go to other courses. I mean, you know, my, my resume is like a book that I have. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I counted like three years ago and I had like 300 diplomas. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a lot. Wow. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, a lot. I mean, yeah. I, I there are at work sometimes I'm like uh, I'm, I don't have anything to do so I'm going to take a course I'm, okay. going, to, I'm going to do that <laughs> so okay. it's like like that but yeah uh, you can see that that is true right so mm -hmm. sometimes you might think uh, that is not going to happen but I mean me myself I have seen two characteristics and I identify mm -hmm. myself with them. it's a good study they did yeah, it's a good thing, even though maybe not everybody's excited like this, but it's a good thing that they have done and researching about behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So the next one is going to be for, let's see, Juan Miguel. Okay. They are comfortable with technology. Yeah? Yep. They are comfortable with technology. Gen Xers grew up with, grew up on MTV, video games, and cable news. Because of that, Gen Xers are very comfortable with technology like computers and the smartphones, along with learning new software or programs. Okay, what did you get from that? This generation is very well adapted. Okay. Um, no sé, yeah, as a wrap up. Uh -huh, as a wrap up, this technology is uh, easily adapted to technology. OK, 
they say, oh, yeah, that is it. They are very, very nice with technology. So they are able to learn new things. So, I mean, nowadays uh, you can use Snapchat, you can do whatever. So, and they are happy with that one. So they are able to, to learn. Good. The next one is going to be for Ada Cáceres. They prefer to create a clear separation the between the work and the personality, the personal lives. Lives. More lives. Um, more so than they precede pre, pre, predecessor. Predecessors. Against extra value for the life balance according to business. Why uh, 40, 41 of the young ex, ex, exers, rank, exers, ranking type of the number of pay one per is the, the generation X teacher is the is uh, the preferred se, separation the, be, between the, the world and the personal uh, activities for the is a is a is a group and um, uh, is the is a group the continue o sea que siguen quiero explicar they continue they continue the baby baby boomers is a is a is a is a, a, a group the people is very important is a is is the facility the the learning is a facility the personality is a facility the, the capacitation is it the it facil separate the the world and the personal and the su personalidad personal, okay uh, yes for them it's very important to separate work and life personal life so it's very important for them to have a life, right? To, to sleep, to go to the park, to go to parties, to go to the beach. Those things are very, very important. So they are, they like to work, but they are not like the other ones that they are going to be just working. So it's also good to live their lives. <laughs> good. So what should you, what you should do for Gen Xers at your workplace? Uh, the first one is going to be for, let's see, Francisco Eduardo. No teacher, uh, offer leadership opportunities. Yeah, please. Uh, James, sirs, are ready to step into leadership roles as baby boomers retire and their direct communication style and enough approach to getting things done make them excellent managers, whether in the form of formal position or mentorship programs. You should find, find ways to use the leadership skill of gen search in your workforce. What did you get from that one? I understand that the people, uh, the youngsters, uh, they have uh, uh, skills for to be a leader. leader. Uh, it's uh, characteristic for these people. And so uh, the idea is uh, uh, take advantage for this, for, for these uh, uh, characters and include, I think uh, I, the, the idea is include these people uh, for uh, uh, how do you say leader teacher? To leader. To leader, to the leader uh, group of people or group of group uh, other uh, workforce. Okay, very good. So that is it. I mean, they are able to, 
to become leaders. They really enjoy that one. And, and it says even if it's a formal way or in another informal like mentoring or teaching something, training people. So they really enjoy that one. That is very interesting. Okay, the next one, enable them to continue to learn. Let's see Maria Alejandra. Okay, teacher. Uh, enable them to continue to learn. Yep. Like we mentioned early, yeah, Jing exerts value education, uh, offering opportunity to continue, continue their education can improve their job satisfaction and likelihood to stay. You can accomplish this through a learning program or a tuition. Tuition. Tuition, a tuition reimbursement plan. What do you get from this? Mm. Uh, con uh, offering a lot of opportunity to the this person continuing their education and win this um, directly to improve their job satisfaction and try to learn more programs to the depends or the maybe careers or need to or the technology or like this. Yeah, definitely. As we said before, right? So they write to learn. So uh, if uh, companies offer them opportunities to continue learning, they will be more than happy to do that. So they will be very glad to do it. Okay. And the last one says offer work flexibility. Uh, Roxana, could you please help me with this? Okay. Uh, offer work flexibility. Our survey found that 53% uh, of employees between the age of 40, 46 and 55 feel that work-life balance is better while working remotely. Additionally, 47% uh, feel that job satisfaction is also better when remote offering the option to work remotely and or choose when, when to work will improve your Gen X employees work-life balance. Good, what do you get from this? Uh, well, um, everybody is agree when talking about the um, work, remotely work give a better uh, quality of life in general, because you have time for your personal stuff, your family or parent stuff or whatever stuff. So that paragraph is about a survey applied to um, universe, specific universe and found that result that everybody is uh, everybody have more satisfaction when have a um, remote work or work remote no your job como sería you can say remote work or work remotely work remotely okay Okay, very good. So yes, uh, they feel better working from home or at least choosing when to work. I mean, three days a week, four days a week working and doing all the duties and that's it, right? So they are better in that way. And there are some words here, let me check. Uh, what is, uh, no, it's not here. Uh, in the previous one, it says tuition reimbursement plan. Do you know what is that? No. Okay, this is a plan that some companies have. So they say to you, go take a course and then 
And whenever you finish the course, if it's satisfactory, you bring the bill and we are going to pay you back. We're going to reimburse you the money of that. Okay. Okay. Very good. So millennials, we're going to check that one. This is related just to work, of course. And it says a collaborative and impact oriented generation. Millennials, also known as Generation Y, were born between 1981 and 1996. This group got the name Millennials because the oldest of them were entering adulthood at the turn of a new millennium. Okay. And he had a few characteristics of millennials. Fernando, the first one, please. Okay, uh, They prefer to collaborate. According to research from Workform, 51% uh, of international millennial workers say collaborating across many things is critical to them staying at, at a job. As a generation, generation, millennials will rather approach the world with consideration for different points of view than take direct, direction from the top down. Good, what do you get from that? Uh, a millennial prefers the team. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, millennial prefers the team and it's good. I am, I am a millennial according to the to my year, <laughs> but maybe I think that I belong to Generation X. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but but I agree with with with, with this. Uh, millennials prefer um, work team um, because I don't know they only need support or okay. something like that. Very good. So yes, it means that they are, since they relate with all departments, sometimes they ask questions, they come and see what do you do here? Can you help me with this one? Let's work together on this one. So, and uh, remember that also uh, El Salvador is a little bit different than uh, the US of course. So that the impact of that one might be kind of different. So they are motivated by meaningful work that is going to be for Marcus. Okay, they are motivated by meaningful work. Work. Millennials prefer work that use their creativity. 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 Sorry. <laughs> creativity. Leverage their talent and make an impact on others. We ask small business employees what they consider to be the most important factor when considering a job after the pandemic. Of those. 26 to 35 years old, 39% say don't worry, they are passionate about is a top factor when considering a job opportunity in the future. Okay, what do you get from this one? Okay, uh, I understand that the, this, this generation uh, prefer to, to apply to a job or to do a job where they are very passionate to do it. Something that they mean is, they think it's meaningful and they enjoy to do it. Uh, perhaps other than offer more wage, I think. So they consider the top factor uh, a meaningful work. Okay, very good, perfect. So. That is it, uh, it's going to be like uh, repetitive works. Uh, they don't like that that much or things that they are not, as you say, passionate about. Uh, they want to think, they want to feel that they are doing something that is productive for the world, for the company. So that is very important for them. Nice, they are digital natives. So that is going to be for, let's see. Jose Wilfredo, is it possible for you? Not possible. Let's see. Me. She's, I know. Yeah, me. Okay, I mean, go ahead, please. Go ahead. 
they are digital natives. Early versions of Wi-Fi were available starting in 1990, which means that millennials grew up with the internet and have watched technology like virtual reality and artificial intelligence grow for their early stages. This exposure has led to a generation with an intuitive knowledge of technology. Good, what do you get from this? Um, in the, <clears throat> sorry, um, in the, in the other generation, uh, I don't know if it's in or on, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. On the, on the other generation, uh, I told you that they are, that they, that you are um, easily or quickly adapted to technology, okay? But this generation grow with the technology, okay? Um, uh, uh, there was a, a new technology and all of the, all of the people or the, the major of these people <clears throat> grew up with with this uh, with this stuff. Okay, um, obviously uh, in in this case, I think they are talking about a developer developer country, países right? desarrollados. Yeah. Uh -huh. But in our case, here in El Salvador, it was. Uh, a little bit later, but um, I think uh, um, I grew up with uh, not with a personal computer because uh, it was for all the family, but uh, we had a, we had a computer, okay, uh, something that no other uh, ages or in other years were not uh, available even for a family, okay? So, uh, like the text said, uh, we are digital natives. I, I am a, a, a millennial, so I, I grew up with, uh, uh, with the internet, uh, hearing the, the, the ring, no, no, not the ring, the, the modem tone, uh, uh, and something like that, that were possible to connect uh, to the internet and all their, uh, uh, um, uh, the other kind of technology. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So when you were born in using technology, of course, it's, it's not that you can adapt, it's that you are able to use that. Maybe since you were a kid, right? So it's going to be much better and adaptable uh, to, to any work that you might want to do. Good. Okay, the next one is going to be for, uh, there are some people that are not available. So let's see, Jose Osmin. Not possible. Let's see then. Let me just check. Uh, Roberto, is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay. Uh, Roxana, help us with that. Sure, uh, which one, teacher, sorry? They are amenable. Okay, they are amenable to feedback. The majority of millennials are currently in either an entry level, intermediate or mid level position. As such, they are focused in 
focus on their own professional development and place at all of value on feedback of, on feedback and mentorship for their managers. What do you get from this? Uh, well, I think that they are open to the to receive a feedback to improve their um, I don't know their skills, their uh, processes, and uh, oh no, see. So they are very happy when uh, getting some feedback. They really like to yeah, know. Yeah, they. I they are open eye because you know when you are uh, working in a in a enterprise with a lot of people not a lot not at all are open to receive feedback the most of the people receive the comment but they are always thinking something bad and maybe millennials are open to receive feedback to improve their um, skills or something like that. Okay. Yeah, definitely something that they really like is feedback. I mean, what am I doing good? What am I doing bad? How can I improve? So that is something that they really like. So the next one, provide what should you, uh, what you should do for millennials at your workplace. So the first one is going to be for Maria Alejandra. Okay, teacher. Provide ample opportunity for collaboration. Collaborating on projects uh, appeals to millennials and desire, des desire. desire to consider viewpoints different for their own uh, because when multiple minds work together, they're bound to be different ideas about to the table. Even, even if the nature of their work is the pen, you can direct them to someone they can bounce idea of, of or who can give feedback on their projects. What did you get from this? <sighs> And that the millennials in these uh, try to uh, work or uh, collaborate on uh, different projects and the person hear different points that um, this group says or that you um work for example like this to call a call okay uh-huh um, but i think that uh, only this good for ideas but when or a lot of millennials to work for alone or independent than the other is not necessary to have a group for to uh, try to do different projects and maybe that don't have a care for it to say the ideas and that the other person get the, a feedback for her prior or their prayers and try to do. Okay, perfect. So yeah, they are very nice collaborator, right? So they really like that part and it's a good thing that you can set them up to collaborate with other teams. Good. The next one is for Marcus. Okay. Um, explain the impact. Uh, set up. Ah, oh, set up, set up. Okay, set up an anonymous employee suggestion box. Millennials want their voice to be here. One way to gather their input is through a digital suggestion box. There are tools designed to share their proposal. But you can also just create an email address that employees can share, can send their ideas and feedback to. What did you get from that? Okay, uh, the millennials um, want to 
always fun to give a suggestion or feedback. So they always search a way to to give that opinion, whether it's for via email or I don't know if they use notes. They write a note, but usually they use an email to send a feedback or to a suggestion. And yeah, they use the designated tool. For example, I think in the the Google Forms, they can use they can use this kind of, of tools to give a uh, to solve a questionnaire. Like a survey or yeah. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, they really like to be heard. So to provide feedback. Nice. The next one is going to be for let's see. Fernando. Okay, teacher. Explain the impact. Yeah. Explain the impact and importance of their contribution. As we mentioned earlier, millennials are motivated by work that is impactful. Help them understand your organization mission and how it makes people life or the world at large a better place. More importantly, consistently measure and share the impact of their performance on the rest of the business. Okay, what do you get from this? Uh, I, I think that millennials are uh, not only uh, in work, uh, also in, in, in general life, uh, they want to show out and they want to express and they want to be popular. Okay. Yes, uh, it's very important for them to check the importance of their contributions to any team or a project that they're working. So that is something that we need to take in consideration. And the last one, uh, give them affectionate feedback. Ana Claudia, can you please help us with this? Okay, give them actionable? Actionable, actionable yeah. Ah, okay, actionable feedback. Uh, I don't know if there is a... Regulationable feedback is important for all employees, uh, regardless of their age. Millennials just happen to be a generation that prioritizes it. We recommend conducting 360 degrees feedback reviews for all employees once a year. Okay, what do you get from this? Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't matter the span. Uh, we, uh, is, the feedback is important for all the generations. It does, but not a, just a feedback for different points, a full and complete feedback, a review. Uh, uh, in my company, I got a, every year I, I receive a, a, now it's a digital document with my uh, one year review. Okay, interesting. So yeah, mm -hmm. feedback is very important for all generations. You say that that is properly correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So interesting to check about all the differences between one or the other from the point of view of the work. So that was so interesting. Uh, we have an activity. Um, Roxanne, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So Roxanne has prepared a little dance. She says she's going to show you. <laughs> no, it's not true. No. <laughs> no. No, it's not. <laughs> no, actually, she's going to dictate you today. So please get some paper and pencil, and she's going to do the dictation today. Estoy ocupada. OK. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's my oh, issues here with my car. Oh, sorry. No worries. You are busy for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you ready, everybody? Or you need a little bit more time to, for you to get paper and pencil? Yeah. 
Ready. Uh, just a Ready. question, teacher. I need to mention the dash. The, oh yeah, part, the punctuation okay. when you are detaining. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay, if you're ready, we're gonna start. Can you please move on, uh, Roxanne? Okay, well, I, I will start. Some adaptations in the workplace, some adaptations in the, in the workplace have come about from employers about from employers accommodating millennials accommodating millennials period the bring dash your dash on the bring dash your dash on device trend device trend open parenthesis b way o d close parenthesis b way o d in parenthesis comma for example comma is at least is as at least in part a reaction in part a reaction to the millennials apostrophe to the millennials apostrophe near dash addition near dash addition to mobile devices to mobile devices, period. Workplace satisfaction, workplace satisfaction matters more to millennials, matters more to millennials than monetary compensation, than monetary compensation. And work dash life balance. And work dash life balance. Is often considered essential is often considered essential, period. They are less likely, they are less likely than previous generation, than previous generations. To put up, to put up with an unpleasant, with an unpleasant work environment, work environment, and much more likely, 
and much more likely to use social networking to use social networking to broadcast to broadcast their concerts to broadcast their concerts period on the other hand comma on the other hand comma satisfied millennials are often satisfied millennials are often employee advocates employee advocates for the organization for the organizations they work for they work for comma providing honest providing honest comma free dash and convincing dash public relations free dash and convincing dash public relations Okay, could you please read the whole paragraph without the presentations, like a normal reading now? Okay. Some adaptation in the workplace have come about from employers accommodating millennials. The bring your own devices trend BYOD, for example, is at least in part a reaction to millennials near addition to mobile devices. Workplace satisfactions matter more to millennials than monetary compensa compensation and work-life balance is often considered essential. They are less likely than previous generations to put up with an unpleasant work environment and much more likely to use social networking to broadcast their concerns. On the other hand, satisfied millennials are often employee advocate for the organization they work for, providing honest, free and convincing public relation. Good, now the moment has come. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the paragraph and then you just check and that will be the end. So let's check how many mistakes you got. So here is it.
Okay, have you finished checking? Yes, one moment. Okay. Teacher. Hello. Why they use dash for separating the words? Uh, because this is like, a, in this case, exactly is like a, like a term that is all together. That's why here is like B-Y-O-D. In this other case is because it's emphasizing something. Uh, okay. Okay. And okay. work, work life. Uh, I'm sorry. Dash in work life, work life balance. Yeah, that is a term very common. Yeah, it's a it's a term. This like this one that is all together. It's just something mm -hmm. that it, it goes together. Okay. Perfect. Okay, has somebody made let's say two mistakes? Me, or... I have two in the parentheses. I didn't realize that they were separate letters. <laughs> and okay. Uh, it's separate, yeah, separate letters. And I thought it was a word. And the other one, uh, when it says, uh, they are less likely than previous generations. <laughs> to, I thought I heard is boot up, not put up. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, those two. Good. Nice, very good. And the other person had just two or less mistakes. Let's say five mistakes or less. Um, I, in the parentheses, I had a mistake. In, in half, I have half in past. Ah, okay. And, and Advocate, I, I didn't understand. Okay, very well. Okay, anyways, this is a very good exercise for you to okay. check. We are going to continue doing some things like that so we can identify next time another person is going to do the dictation. So, and it's going to be a very good practice for us. So, bring your own devices like uh, when you bring your own computer to the work, right? So, something like that it's like a like a like a culture for millennials right that is true that mm. is okay my friends so we will be finishing we're going to check the attendance very quickly and that's it so Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza present teacher good Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez present teacher good Dani Josué García Martínez Fernando Marvin González Martínez present good Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Ok. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanés. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Simón Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, thank you for the detection, uh, dictation, Roxanne. It was very good. Also, uh, everybody have a good weekend. Rest very well. See you on Monday and dream in English. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.